Would you like to add and edit text without using the type tool on a vector layer? Well now you can with the new text effect. And that's what we'll look at today. Hello friends, and today I'd like to show you a new feature coming up in the next release of OpenTunes 1.3 due out in a few weeks. And the release candidate is out now if you'd like to try it early. And I've got links to these in the description below. So as you've gathered from the title of this video, the feature is a way to have easily editable text using the new text effect, available from version 1.3 onwards. It's a small effect, but with a few caveats, so to make viewing or later navigating this video easier, I've included some timestamps in the description, so you can jump to the section you're interested in. And as always, if you're new here, my name's Darren, and on this channel I release new OpenTunes tutorials, news videos and animations weekly. So subscribe to not miss them and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. So, on to the new feature. Now you can add text on a vector level easily, simply by adding a vector level, going to the type tool, clicking on the page and then just typing the words. But if you change your mind about it, it can be tricky to insert or replace the text. For instance, if you want to insert the word old inside here, You'd have to move the end two words out of the way and then insert the text onto the page hoping it lines up and if it doesn't you then just need to select and try and move this piece by piece until it does line up and getting the spacing right and the size of the text and the font can be quite difficult and mostly you're better off just deleting it all and adding it fresh and for some cases using text from the type tool is fine and I've got a video that covers lots of ways to use it, linked in the card above and in the description below. But if you've got a lot of text, it can take some time. Enter the new text effect. And you add it as you would any effect on the effect schematic. So at the bottom of the screen here, you can see the stage schematic. And by clicking the button at the bottom right, it changes to the effect schematic. And there is the first column, which I'll just rename. So we just right click in the effect schematic Choose to add an effect, go down to render, and it's the text RWA. And you notice immediately this adds a new column in the X sheet with a single cell exposure, and you can click and change the length of that. And you can't see the text in the previewer until you enable the full preview mode, which is a bit of a downside, but manageable. And you can change the position of the text by dragging the center of the output. And by clicking the corners, you can change the size of the containing box. Let's put this back to the center. I'll just undo that and undo the center position. And you notice that the text on the screen didn't update as the box area went to the center. And this is one of the downsides of using this effect. To fix that, you can simply right click and choose Regenerate Preview, which redraws the text in the correct place. So there's three ways to add text. And if you double click on the effect, you get to see the effect settings. Two of them use a note column, and one uses the text area here, and you select which you're going to choose by using the source. So the input text is this box here, so if you change that text to anything we like, and it updates on the screen. Again, if it doesn't, you can just press Ctrl S to save it, or right click and regenerate preview. And using this input text is good when you have lots of text to show, perfect for the credits at the end of your film for instance, as you might change your mind quite often as to what you want in them. So I'll just put a large chunk of text in there to demonstrate that. And you'll see that to fit all the text in the box, the text size has had to be reduced. So what we need to do is to make the size of the box larger. So if I zoom out of the page first, and then just resize the box. And you'll notice it resizes about the centre point. So as you move the top right to the right, the top left also goes to the left. About there. And then because we want some scrolling, we'll make it taller. And then resize the center so that the top is at the top of the screen. Now whichever source you use for the text, all the options at the bottom of this dialog all work the same. So we've got some horizontal alignment, which I've set to the left for now. You can change it to the right, center, and then justified. But I'll leave that in the center on this occasion. And that works great for input text, but for note levels, the horizontal alignment doesn't change anything. The text stays in the center. 
There's also currently no vertical alignment, so the box that your text is within, if that is larger than the text contained, then you'll have a gap at the top and the bottom as the text sits in the middle. So the centre position is the centre of the display box here, and the width and height are the width and height of the display box too. And you notice that they're all keyable, which means that you can animate them, and we'll take a look at that shortly. You can change the font for the text, change its style, and then also the size. And there you see now I've made the text smaller, that there's a gap at the top, and there'll be a similar gap at the bottom, as the text sits in the middle. You can change the text colour, either by double-clicking to bring up a colour editor, or if you've got a colour editor on screen, you can simply click it once, and then change the colour in there. And that'll update on the screen. And the box itself can have a colour. You'll notice that alpha is set to zero, so you need to bring that to the top first. And then you can change the colour as necessary. And finally at the bottom, you can include the border, which is basically using the same text colour for a border. And as I said, you can key the position of the effect. So if I want the effect to move from frame 1 to frame 12, I can start at frame 1, put it in the right position, add a key, then move to frame 12, I can move the centre up, There we go, and then key that position there. You notice that when I added the keys, the keys appeared on the X sheet. So now if I play those 12 frames, you'll see it scrolling along. You notice that after playing, it went back to frame one, and we can change that in the preferences. If we go to the preview page and untick, rewind after playback. And now when you play, it'll end on the last frame. So you can key the movement of this text you can key the width and height of the box, but you can't currently animate the rotation or the shear from the animation tool options. Just the position and then the width and height. But text added this way can't currently be changed during the column's lifetime. So to add another block of text, you'd add another effect, which adds another column. So you'd right click, add an effect, render, text IWA. And this creates a second column. So without adding any effects or special timing, we've now got a serviceable set of credits. So for large blocks of text, this is fine. But for smaller text that changes frequently, like on-screen subtitles or translations, you might be better off using the notes column. Plus, you could have different notes columns with different languages and render those out separately if you wanted. Let me show you how they work. So to add a notes column, you simply right-click over a blank column and choose New Note Level. I'm going to add a second one here. OK, so what we'll do is we'll add the subtitles for a conversation between two people. So we'll label the columns appropriately. And then add two effects. So I'll add some text for each character, and it'll also show which notes column the effect is using. So to add a note, you simply double click in the grey area and start typing. So if we look at text IRA 04 first, so double click on that. Instead of using the input text, we use nearby note column. And I'll move the effect to the bottom of the screen as it is supposed to be a subtitle. I'll make it fit the full width and then I'll hit save and show the preview. And it's shown also, of course, column three, so I'll hide that for now. So you can see by changing the source to nearby notes column, it's using the text from the left hand side, character 1. And alternatively, you can change the source to use the specified note column, and in here you have to give the index of the column. So we'll start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I change that to number 6, you can see it's now using the text for character 2 in column number 6. But if you do move that notes column or insert another drawing column or any other column to the left, then this text effect will fail. If I move that over there and then refresh the preview and you'll see that there's nothing on screen because column six doesn't contain the notes column. So personally, I'd prefer to keep the effect column next to the notes column 
and choose to use a nearby note column. So it always uses the column to the left. Or if you're using the horizontal timeline, it'll be the column below. As you can see here, character one, text I were four. So I'll set up the character two's text column as well. I'll enable that. And I will change this to use nearby note column, and that'll use the hello column. And in fact, to make it more obvious, what I'll do is I'll change the colour of the text. So I'll make it blue for character one, and then green for character two. And obviously both characters don't normally talk at once. So what we can do is extend the effect column to last the length of the conversation, and then extend the conversation subtitles for as long as necessary. And then for character two, he doesn't speak until a little bit after character one is finished. And then if you want character one to speak again after that, just double click in a fresh cell and start typing. And again, extend the effects columns to last the length of the conversation. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So character one says hi, character two says hello, character one, how are you? And character two, fine thanks. So using the notes column is really handy when you've got text that changes regularly, like in the conversation for subtitles. And these might be fixed later, or you might have to learn to live with them. But for now, you just need to be aware of them. Firstly, the notes column can be difficult to write text in. It's very small, and you can't see all of your text. And if you want to edit already added text, it can get messy. So sometimes it's best to just hit delete and type it fresh. So here, for instance, where we say, how are you? If I double click and try and use the arrow keys to move around, it jumps out of the box. So you can click and place the cursor where you want to edit, if you can see, but it's difficult to see. So it might be best just to click in there and delete everything and type afresh. So even though I've deleted everything, you can still see in black the text that was there before. So now I'll type in the fresh text. And after updating the preview, you can see the new text. And finally, you can't use all the characters that you'd like to. For instance, I know you can't use a single quote, so writing it's, that's, or who's is currently impossible. Also, annoyingly, you can't use the letter Z, as that's reserved for adding keys. So if I double click to add a new piece of text and try and type the word snooze, you'll notice that when I press Z, a key appeared, and press it again, and the key disappears. So the letter Z won't appear in the text area, but it'll add or remove a global key. And you can see below the main drawing area that the blue key is lighting up and going off as I press Z. So that's adding and removing a global anime key, which again, I hope will be fixed in a version in the near future. In the meantime, from installing, you can't type a Z. But you can get around that by changing or removing the Z keyboard shortcut in the shortcuts dialog. So simply go to the Configure Shortcuts option, search in the dialog for key, and then look in there for setting and removing a key. And you can see that's on here. So I'll simply hit Remove. Close that. And now if I try to type the word snooze, I can do. And again, regenerate the preview and I can see the word snooze. However, it's worth saying you can do both of these using the single quote and using the Z key when you take the text from the input text section. So it's not all roses for this new effect, but it's a great improvement and one that you will find a use for. But if you spot any other issues with it, why not drop a comment below and let the rest of us know? So that's adding and working with editable text using the new text effect. Useful for so many situations, I've barely scratched the surface. So why not give it a go yourself and see what uses you can come up with? I've already had one idea for it, and I'll show you that next week. And that's a guarantee.